for the first time since 2020, a phrase that has many follow-ups in 2022. Here in the Dairy State, with the Monsters of Destruction, that is no exception. With five monsters ready to blow through cold country, we get set to bring you the best of the best from this doubleheader weekend. Welcome to the legendary Veterans Memorial Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, where we are ready to go with the first stop of the 2022 Monsters of Destruction, set to bring you highlights from this five-truck event that includes a newly painted war wizard with a brand new body. Of course, the Robbins family out in force. There you see Montana Robbins chatting with R.J. Turner, and there you see Triton Robbins driver, the crazy train. Those two have come a long way we first saw them back in 2019. Then the Raminator, of course, with Monsters of Destruction, that big heavy horsepower machine, and a big story with Against the Grain, Brad Shipper returning to the seat for the first time in more than a year and a half. We'll tell you about that later in the show. Right now, though, we're gonna get things underway with highlights of night number one qualifying round action would start off this two-night event. First up, Jeremy Dishman out of Bismarck, Illinois in the Hemi-powered Ram Trucks Raminator, the big power wagon out of Champaign, Illinois with the Firestones. Now this is a little bit of an altered Chicago style track. As you'll see, they start outside the racing lanes. Good launch for the big Hemi motor Ram. As he heads around with the final jump, a little bobble in both turns would end up hurting his time, but a solid run nonetheless and a 13.24 and keep your eyes on that clock as we go through both qualifying sessions here this weekend. Montana Robbins now out of Lawton's New York taking his qualifying run. Open front end, we would see how it would handle on this track, a little bit smoother tire setup. And he had a nice run as well, a 13-14 by one-tenth of a second. He takes the number one spot. Crazy train, Triton Robbins out of Lawton's New York. He had the hardest starting line launch all weekend long. The older brother of the two was set to blister this track. A little problem right there, but he was able to lay down a solid performance here in qualifying. 13.73 would put him in third place after session number one. War Wizard now, R.J. Turner out of Knoxville, Maryland. New paint scheme done by Trey Myers, new fiberglass done by Trey Myers. But remember, R.J. has been at the wheel of Overkill Evolution for the past couple of weeks. You can see right there, getting used to the way this machine works its way through the corners. It's got a spool front and rear of the truck he's been driving as an open front end and a locker in the rear. Not a bad run considering the problems he had, but a 15-27 would not get him in the top of the field. Obviously, our final competitor, the guy we said there's a big story surrounding. Again, we'll tell you about that a little later in the show. Brad Shepard out of Dixon, Illinois in the big green Ford called Against the Grain. This machine was formerly Doug Nolke's big dog. Doug out of Union, Missouri. Glad to see this team continuing on after the season they had. Thirteen fourteen was the time to beat. He wouldn't do it at a 14.09, but considering he hasn't been at the wheel in over a year and a half, this is uh, quite a strong performance for the big Ford 
out of Dixon, Illinois. Our first matchup in round number one would pit a pair of guys who have uh, had a budding rivalry here that includes R.J. Turner's stint in the Overkill Evolution Ford now driving his own machine, trying to get used to this Patrick chassis setup with the uh, big KB Olds in the back. We're gonna go nose to nose with the Jansen powered crazy train. Maryland versus New York, the old line state versus the Empire State. The first matchup of round number one was about to get underway as you get the thumbs up from RJ. Both of them real aggressive, a real tight race. RJ Turner, though, laying on the power, was able to pick up that first round victory over one of his fiercest rivals, but a good friend off the track, Triton Robbins. Up next, we would see the Raminator, the big Hemi-powered machine, the Illini, Jeremy Dishman, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the other man from Illinois. The big story rolling in, Brad Shippard against the grain. He's been close to beating Raminator in the past, but he's never been able to pull it off. Would he be able to do it here in Madison? Slight edge to the Raminator, but a better entrance to the final turn for Brad Shippard. However, the Raminator was able to put the horsepower to the ground and just barely edged out Brad Shippard in against the grain. That right there is about as close as Brad has ever gotten. This story would continue throughout the weekend. We'll keep you up to date on that now. The Raminator back on the track, but you see all the smoke coming out. This truck is uh, currently recovering from a massive transmission fire that it suffered a week before this event at a uh, another a Monster Jam event where it burst into flames with uh, Mark Hall aboard. Fortunately, he was uninjured. Now, Jeremy Dishman at the wheel of this machine. is. It's good to see Jeremy back in the big bad Ram. He would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with R.J. Turner here in the semifinal round. Pair of very powerful machines, both of them with a good hole shot. RJ seems to be getting the hang of his truck once again, but right there goes very deep in the corner. And Jeremy Dishman with a nearly perfect turn was able to take advantage of the problems for War Wizard and RJ Turner, who is currently trying to tune his suspension as the weeks go on. Here in these highlights you're seeing, he does not have the truck set up the way he would like. It's landing a lot stiffer than he would like it to. Now as Montana Robbins would get set to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brad Shippard and against the grain. The Empire State up against the state of Illinois right here in the semifinals. Brad Shippard looking for a final round berth. You see Montana trying to use the staggered rear steering to get off the line a little bit quicker. It did not work to his advantage. In fact, the rear steering began to malfunction at this point. I believe they had a, either a ball switch or a steering ram or wire something going away in that rear steering. Brad Shipper took full advantage of it and drove on to victory. That is how things got underway here in Madison, Wisconsin, and that would set up a championship race between Brad Shippard and against the grain and Raminator and Jeremy Dishman, the Illini. Stay with us. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by Crush This. For a look inside the world of monster trucks, check out Crush This, a monster truck podcast.
fast and blown alcohol madness return to the Lee County Mud Motorsports Complex. April 22nd and 23rd, featuring an all-out assault in one of the most tradition-rich hill and hole pits in the country. Along with the quickest, fastest open class and modified machines on the fast track. Two days of town and dirty action. Don't miss your chance to see the return of the fastest of the fast and blown alcohol madness. April 22nd and 23rd. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by Monsters Monthly. For up-to-date info, media, and all your other monster truck needs, visit MonstersMonthly.com. And by RPM Army. For a wide array of content from across the motorsports world, visit RPMArmy.com. Your high-performance fix on the go. Highlighted coverage continuing from the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin with the Monsters of Destruction. This series, going back to the early 2000s, definitely a very race-oriented series, and that continues here with some of the best Chicago-style racing we have seen in terms of how close these pairings have been as we get ready to head into our championship race on night number one. A big story that we mentioned, though, at the top of the show included one Brad Shipperton against the grain. As I mentioned, he has yet to beat the Raminator, but the bigger story going in was the year that Brad Shippard had, beginning halfway through 2020. All right, where's all my... So I've always had an interest in off-road and trucks in general, um, even from a little kid. Of course, when I was a little kid, you know, Bigfoot was the truck to watch and the truck to be, and I idolized everything Bigfoot, Pen to Point series, all that stuff. And growing up, getting into high school, I... I I don't know, it was just the belief that it wasn't an attainable thing. So then I focused on my agriculture career and just played around with trail trucks and mud trucks and so on and so forth. Eventually, life led me to have a, a, a mega truck, and we called that Against the Grain. And we ran that at a show in Indiana for a benefit for kids with cancer and did a short little freestyle there. And it ran into some monster truck people along the way that said, hey, you're pretty good at this. You should." You should join the fun with us and get out of these mud trucks and, and get serious about, about, about monster trucks. And uh, eventually it led me to Doug Nolke, who at the time was running the Big Dog and Tailgater, and he was wanting to sell the, the Big Dog operation off. So we uh, negotiated a price and everything. We'd done the deal, and uh, one thing led to another, and Against the Green was born. So, so 2020 was an interesting year. You know, we started off here in Madison and we, we kind of had a rough weekend that weekend. We blew a transmission up and we had some other damage go on. Pretty typical, I guess, for a first quarter show. And then we went down to Decoin, Illinois. Had a really good weekend down there. Was uh, successful in racing. Um, had some mechanical issues down there. But, you know, once again, it was a par for the course for, for that. And it had a really good time down there. Uh, and then, of course, COVID hits and things start slowing down. So the last show that I did in 2020 was June 25th and it was at Lacrosse Speedway, Simple Car Crush, shortly after 4th of July. Um, I had to make a trip personally out to Pittsburgh to my, where my brother lives and back, and I was starting to notice some back pain then. And uh, you know, I just felt more chiropractic than anything else. I just need my, my ribs popped or something. Didn't think anything of it. Uh, shortly thereafter, I had a dentist appointment and some typical routine fillings and the dentist said I bled more than I should and it was alarming to him to the point that I should go get it checked out. So uh, that day I went to the local hospital uh, to get checked out and they called me immediately and said you need to get to uh, a much larger facility where you can get care for cancer because we think you have a leukemia. So I went to Peoria, Illinois, and once I got there down there, I immediately required a blood transfusion, which ultimately saved my life, because if I would have went to sleep that night, I wouldn't have woke up of the way, how fast the disease was progressing and the condition that my blood was in. It was, was not clotting, it was just gooey. It was, it, I was in really rough shape then. So 
So, uh, you know, I'm a small family farmer. It, it's literally just me and my wife and my children and, and a couple of part-time guys. And, and one of those part-time guys, his name is Bob Fenwick, but he is, uh, you know, the most reliable person. He's 71 years old. He, he's one of those types of guys. He shows up to work on time all day, every day, and, and is amazing. We don't, I don't ever have to tell him how to do anything. We just say, hey, let's just go do this for the day, and we just go out and do it. So I have the most amazing support system at home, uh, and along with my father-in-law, too. He, he helped me out tremendously in, in the farming aspect, and I had to have my uncle come in and, and plant my crop for me for 2021 season. So, um, amazing support system at home and I also had that same support system too here with the monster truck and with my crew and everything like that too so with the platform you have in the monster truck industry you know we all have a story to tell and I knew immediately with my faith a strong Christian faith that between this truck and my faith and this cancer story that there's there's a story here that's brewing regardless if I made a recovery or if if things didn't go the way they have, um, at least we're documenting how having faith can help you persevere and build character and have hope and, and faith through a, a, a tumultuous time like I went through. I need to just focus on, on positivity and I can't, yes I was showing myself in a very vulnerable state and I was weak, especially when I went in for my stem cell transplant. Um, they pre, it's. The nurses told me it's the closest thing you can get to a death and a resurrection as you can and remain living. This whole process has been a learning experience for me. I never knew anything about blood cancers and leukemias and different chemotherapies and different stem cell transplants and uh, bethematch.org is how my donor is found and, and, and all these different organizations that are there for support and assistance. It, it's really opened my eyes to how diverse this cancer can be and it's affected everyone anyone you talk to it's affected them in, in one way or another and what we're doing here if we can be uh, just a glimmer of light in the darkness or if we can give someone hope someone is listening out there that's going through what I went through or a similar situation and if we can give them hope and inspiration and maybe for, have them forget about the problems for a couple hours, then that's the job that we need to do. Give it up for Brad and Chipper in against the gray. It's so awesome to see Brad back at the wheel of the big green Ford out of Illinois. He takes on his most ominous foe and his biggest rival over the years, at least in terms of the truck. Doesn't matter who's driving it, though. The Illini is going toe-to-toe -to -toe right here in the championship race on night number one. Identical starts and a beautiful first turn for Brad Shippard. He actually had the lead going into the final corner, but that little bobble on the race ramp hurt him, and the drive off the corner went to the ram. He was able to edge out Brad Shippard, who still has not beaten, at this point in the weekend, the big ram trucks fleet out of Champaign, Illinois, out of the Hall Brothers camp. Jeremy Dishman picking up that night one race win, but Brad wasn't done. He has not been in this building since January of 2020. We lost the 2021 Monsters of Destruction event here in Madison, Wisconsin. 2020 was wild. Now the dirt would not quite cooperate with us here this weekend, but Brad came out to show he still had what it took to get some big air underneath the big four. You can see how tough it is to wheel one of these trucks around a building this size, but Shipper looking good here and against the grain. Definitely not afraid of that loud pedal as he dusts down his family who was sitting over there in the corner where he just did that donut, a solid performance to start off our freestyle on night number one. Dwight Robbins in the crazy train. He 
he has quite a reputation to uphold. He has become known for some of the best stoppies and really worked his moonwalks to near perfection right now. We've seen him pull some great ones, especially this season and at the tail end of the 2021 season. What would he bring to the table here in Madison? This is a very loose surface. It's been tough to get traction. You can see the dirt going away. They are keeping it watered, but it just doesn't want to clump together. This is kind of the lake soil. It's uh, out here in this Great Lakes area, and, and he is laying down a run right now as best he can. Watch what starts to happen here, though, as he goes for the stoppy. I will tell you right now, nobody was more disappointed in that than Triton Robbins. And it would show before the end of this run. Have to send the Sergeant Smash cleaning bill up to Lawton's New York to the Robbins family to get those seats dusted down. Again, started to get a little traction there, but it kept rolling. He was not done, not by a long shot. Now, to spoil it a little bit, he wasn't able to get the stoppy, but you can see the determination in the driving style. Sets the rear end down. Probably one of the most determined freestylers we have seen in this business in quite some time and to drive the truck as consistently and without destroying it as he does. There is a lot to be said for this awesome team out of the Empire State as he works that Jensen powered Eddie Majka chassis around the floor. Here in the Alliant Energy Center blowing the dirt off of the concrete. Our final competitor in freestyle on Saturday night would be none other than Jeremy Dishman in the Raminator. Right now leading freestyle at this point in our coverage was Crazy Train. This would be a little bit of a controversial ending for some people, but Jeremy Dishman also very consistent driver, very determined driver, and driving a truck that is not necessarily at 100%. He manages to do what he can with it, and it was fairly impressive given the problems this truck was having coming into the weekend. Big nose over right there as this truck really was built for racing so when he nails those ramps like that it has a tendency to want to nose the truck over especially the way he has the shock set up here this weekend kind of soft he would end up wrapping up this night of action with the freestyle victory. Some people felt that Triton Robbins won that freestyle, but on paper, it would go to the big ram out of Illinois. We're not done yet, though. Night two highlights on the way. Stay with us. Listen up. It doesn't matter if you just watch your first show or you're a longtime fan of the sport and you want to know more about monster trucks, well, tune into the Throttle Out Show on Monday and Thursday nights live on our YouTube channel at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. You'll get the inside scoop and all the behind-the-scenes footage and monster trucks and soon-to-be all other motorsports. Life is better when your foot is to the floor. So remember, when in doubt, throttle out. Welcome to Wild Man Adventures. We're at the Silver Lake Sand Dragway. There really wasn't any off-roading back then. It was all off-road. We're on our way to Lima, Ohio. Got wooden wheels. Oh, it's slippery. It's all good on it. Hey, we're here with Rich Cummins. Hey, we're here with Mike Potter. Hey, we're here with Al Pizzo. We gotta check it out.
This week we're gonna go down memory lane. Wisconsin with highlights of night number two of the Monsters of Destruction inside the Alliant Energy Center 5 machines. Of course, taking on this uh, kind of a tough track. The dirt, again, just did not want to come around. Very powdery surface, but we saw some great racing on night number one. How would it play out on night number two? Starting things off and qualifying your night number one racing champion, Jeremy Dishman in the Raminator. The other four will square off for a chance to get in the Maybe a little bit hesitant off the start. He was a bit late on the green, but not a bad couple of corners he was able to make. You can see the tracks holding together a little bit better than it did on night number one, a 13.97. And keep in mind, the fast time on this track so far was a 13.14. Up next, the Jansen powered Eddie Magica chassis crazy train out of Lawton's New York. Tremendous starting line launch of the big Goodyear's digging up the soil. And a blistering pass at that. And check this out, he reset the clocks. A 12.41 brought down from a 13.14. These guys knew they were gonna have to go hard to knock out Dwight Robin. R.J. Turner, you see here, trying to work track perfection again, still kind of getting used to uh, the setup of his personal vehicle. <laughs> He's finally back at the wheel of a 13.05, though, would have been number one had it not been for that ride that Triton Robbins took a few passes before. He actually was very, very close to Triton's back door. Finally in qualifying, Brad Shippard in against the grain out of Illinois. Solid launch and a good first turn, but problems with the self-center as the rear wheels will not come back to center in the final corner. He had trouble lining it up. Could have put the truck on its top, but considering the problems he had, a 1390 is not bad at all. Now, the slowest qualifier of the bunch was Montana Robbins in Plane Crazy. He would take on R.J. Turner, your second fastest qualifier in round number one. R.J. ready to put down the two brothers out of Illinois. Would he be able to get through both of them on this second night of racing here in Madison? We were about to find out as round number one got underway. Beautiful first turn for both trucks. Turner with a little lead at this point, but he goes way deep right there and hands the win to the big bad Chevrolet out of the Empire State. The beautiful blue Silverado moving on into semifinal round action. Here now is the second pairing and a rematch of the two-time matchup that we saw both in round number one and in the championship race of night ones, racing against the grain and Raminator going at it. One more time, could Shipper do it here? A tremendous launch for the Ford. He got not only a good hole shot, but he had about a truck length lead going into the final corner. But that little bobble allowed the Ram to catch up. The question was, did the Ram get there in front? of Brad Shipper. We had to go back to the photographer on this one. We are not right on the finish line, but as they come around, you are gonna see how close this finish actually was. Shipper right there trying to get the truck back under control. He jumped to the right, and by about the width of a tire, at that speed, the Ram was able to just get around him. And you can 
can see Lee Collins gesturing that he thinks the Ram got the win. The photographer proved on camera, indeed the Ram got that victory. Now, back up on board with Triton Robbins for his bye run. Watch the starting line launch. This guy had the best hole shots of the night. Making the family proud, making the engine builder and the chassis builder proud. His crazy train worked this track to perfection. He moved on in to the semifinal round where he would end up taking on RJ Turner in the War Wizard. The first matchup of the semifinals would feature Montana Robbins and playing crazy against the Illini, Jeremy Dishman in Raminator. Solid launch for both. Believe it or not, Robbins got to the first corner first. That nose over right there was absolutely killer for the big Ram. He had problems in the final turn and probably the biggest victory of that kid's career came right there. Montana Robbins and Blaine Crazy knocks out the Raminator in Madison, Wisconsin on night number two. Our final semifinal matchup would pit the rivals back on the track, Crazy Train. The Jansen powered locomotive out of New York taking on the old liner, R.J. Turner out of Knoxville, Maryland. R.J. definitely pushing the 2041 Willis hard, but it would not be enough as he had problems again in that final corner, almost got into the equipment down there. And just to add insult to injury, Triton Robbins was blowing the horn at him as they headed back to the pits. And I can tell you, RJ did not respond well to that. Now, we head back out onto the track for a championship race. It's all in the family here, brother against brother, the older brother in the train, the younger brother, the Empire Flyer. These two ready to go toe to toe here in the championship round, the last race of the weekend in Madison, Wisconsin, on paper. The favorite to win had to be Triton Robbins. He had put down the fastest qualifying time all weekend long. He seemed unbeatable with his huge starting line launches. How would it play out in the dirt, though, was the question. Brother against brother, the final race of the weekend in Madison, Wisconsin. A great hole shot, but right here, the mechanical problems start. Crazy train pushing to the left. He has a broken left front axle. He tried to fight back, but he just couldn't catch his younger brother, Montana Robbins, who may have had just the biggest racing night of his career, knocking out not only his brother here in the finals, but he was able to come from the slowest qualifying spot and knock out the big bad Raminator, one of the top racers in the industry. But the night wasn't over. We go on board now and listen in as Triton Robbins informs his father that he has a damaged truck. So that could make turning hard, but that was the least of his problems. We'll see in just a moment. Crazy train and a lot of New York opening up freestyle. Triton not worried about that broken axle. He'll fight through it, but you can see right there that left front is not pulling. He came out hard. He was ready to put on quite a show for these fans. He wasn't happy with his night one freestyle. He was ready to try to go for that stopping. He... 
And right there you can see mechanical problems continuing for Triton Robbins in Crazy Train bringing the freestyle to a premature end and there's the culprit. Snap the blower belt. Lee Collins handing that off to Bob Robbins. A very disappointing night for Triton here. Wasn't able to pick up a racing win as strong as he was and some people felt like he got robbed for that night one freestyle victory but on paper the way it is his brother though would try to come out and redeem the team here in Madison, Wisconsin. Throwing dirt out into the atrium, but laying down an awesome run, the Jansen powered Chevrolet. Laying down a shot, a solid freestyle, a great flow, and he has come a long way since the first time we saw him on the track. Montana Robbins looking good this weekend in playing crazy and uh, carrying the momentum on as he just came off of a huge racing win. We would continue on freestyle now. Brad Shippard out of Dixon, Illinois against the grain. The Patrick Chassis machine originally owned by Doug Nolke out of Union, Missouri. This is such a solid piece of equipment and it goes to show how good a truck will run for as long as this one has when you take care of it. And Brad started off strong by clearing the pad. Big launch right there. There's a talent to really throw one of these trucks around inside of one of these small arenas. And this arena's got quite a history with these monster trucks. This is one where it is really a big boost to your career if you can get a win in here, the history that this building has. Brad, though, all he was worried about was putting on his show, and he did so. Again, his first time behind the wheel was this weekend in Madison, Wisconsin. First time in over a year and a half. He was battling some tough trucks. This, though, would be the ride of the night. Watch this. First guy that seemed to have a chance at a stoppy, brand new body. Just got wasted, at least the hood did. Snap the hood completely in half, an electrical failure put that truck on its uh, lid. Now, some people right thought there. that somebody may I'm have prematurely detonated the killer radio, yeah, but I can tell over. you, I was standing next to him, I never heard the radio beep. The I told you, I told you you were in for a treat. Last show of the week. RJ was A-OK, -okay, climbing out of the right PEI machine. They would write that truck, we watch it again, as soon as the rear tires left the ramp, the power was gone, and on his head, went the war wizard and RJ Turner a very disappointing end as he was going to start things off with that stop if you can see the Ford momentum just ceased There you see the big wave of dirt come off the body panels as they righted that truck. RJ was A-OK, -okay. he stayed strapped inside, took it right off the course, they tired it down. Of course, the hood snapped completely in half. They were none too happy about it, but no hard feelings at the end of the weekend. That's competition. They had a wild one following this event in Decoin, Illinois. We were not there, but if you want to see the action live, check out Monsters of Destruction on Facebook or MonstersOfDestruction.com for tickets and info. And don't forget, these guys have an awesome event the weekend of March 25th out in Corbin, Kentucky. you got to get out and see it live. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.